Thank him for this time to be able to say just a couple things. But he's going to come and bring a message called Free Indeed. And we certainly are. Pastor Bob. Thank you, brother. Sure appreciate you, Pat, and uh, the history he brings. You think Pat's a patriot? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I appreciate that. You know, we, we're in the greatest country in the world. We are so blessed to be here. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. You know, we sang Happy Birthday to me today. And I always thought growing up, that when the fireworks, and I said, man, they're having all this for me? <laughs> Until I got older and someone told me, no, that's not for you. <laughs> that's to celebrate our nation, the freedoms that we have here. Uh, you know, God is perfect, man is imperfect. And even our laws are imperfect. Uh, they are just the skeletons or the bones, per se, to keep us in line, just like guardrails on the roadway. We need some type of guardrails. Uh, could you imagine going down a four-lane highway with no lines in it? You wouldn't know what side to drive on. We'd have a lot of destruction. So we have things in place, guardrails. But man corrupts them. And man takes laws, and we have corrupt laws that are on the books today. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And, and what I mean by that is, we don't need a policeman. We don't even need the guardrails. Uh, per se, we know that we're to drive on the right-hand side. Well, that's where it is. But we know where we're to drive, and we know where we're to go. And... God has written His laws on our hearts as believers. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that a blessing? We don't need to tell uh, someone to tell, Thou shalt not murder, Pastor Bob. Oh, okay. That's, that's news. But see, because it's written on my heart. I know not to murder. You'll see where I'm, I'm going. If you get a chance to turn in your Bibles, we're going to be taking this from John 8. John 8. And the context of, of the scripture in John 8, uh, Jesus was always getting challenged by the religious and by the, the lawyers, uh, the lawgivers, even. How many know that you could take law and twist it to say things that it doesn't say or to do things that will, per se, uh, bring unrighteous gains to those who are giving the laws out. We have it today. Um, we know that, as I said earlier, that thou shalt not murder. We know that. It's, it's placed, but uh, there's consequences for murder. See, the laws were given not for the righteous, but for the unrighteous. And we're going to look at that after we look at some scriptures. So in John 8, and starting in the first couple of verses, there was a woman who was caught in adultery. And the law uh, was that if you committed adultery, there was a stoning for this. Uh, but that's not what I want us to see here. What I want you to see is those taking the law to Go ahead and entrap somebody. Do you think we have a lot of that today? Uh, that uh, our laws are good and righteous and they're framework, but if you're unrighteous, you can take those to entrap somebody. And uh, we found that over our last presence, the entrapment of, of many things. And so right here, so this is not new to anything. Here you have the Pharisees and the Sadducees try to entrap Jesus with the very law. You see. So if you just read with me a couple of the verses uh, in chapter 8, we're going to read through verse uh, 8, 1 through 8, and it goes like this. Uh, but Jesus, he went out to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came back into the temple. Okay, I'm just going to paraphrase, get through this. All the people came to him. He sat down to teach the people. That's what Jesus was teaching the ways 
of the Spirit, the ways of righteousness. He sat down to teach them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees, they were uh, the lawyers of the day. They were uh, the, the guardians of the law. They were the ones who were, were keeping the law. That could have been uh, today our Congress, per se. Follow me here. Stay with me. Then the scribes and the Pharisees, they brought a woman who was caught in adultery. And when they set her in his midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commanded that such should be stoned. But what do you say? And now he, it gives us this. It says, This they said to test him that they might have something to which to accuse him. But Jesus stepped or stooped down and he wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Many scholars tried to figure out what did Jesus write on the ground? Some say, well, maybe he was taking the Ten Commandments. You know, and I scratched my head and uh, I thought of back in Daniel. And there was a writing on the wall. Belshazzar was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, the great grandson. And he took the holy things of God and corrupted them. See, God's laws are perfect and true. God's ways are perfect. But man always takes the things of God and corrupts them. And so there was this writing on the wall there back in Daniel chapter 4 that said, Mina, Mina. Tekel, Farsa. Which meaning, your days are numbered. You've been weighed on the scales. You have been found in one. And what? To Cal or Parson? Yeah. That this, this will be the end of the kingdom. And so he was saying, in that sense, God's finger, writing in the dirt maybe, or saying to the those who were leading the Israelites, the, the legalistic ones, that their kingdom that they had was coming to an end. And there was a new kingdom that was getting set up. Not with the letter of the law, but with the spirit. Because the law was given to lead men to right places, but it wasn't given for those who would be born again at the time from above. Now, if you turn with me to 1 Timothy for a moment, and just look at verse 8 through 10. And it just wants, wants you to see something about why the law was given and why the law is good if it's used lawfully. Do you think that the Pharisees at that time or the lawyers were using the law lawfully? They wanted to condemn Jesus or manipulate and to expose something about him. Uh, that was unrighteous. But now we look in 1 Timothy. It says, But well, we know, this is verse 8, that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinner, for the unholy and the profane, for the murderers, of fathers and the murderers of mothers, for the manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there are any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Paul wrote that to Timothy. There again, saying, when you're born again, God places his law in us. You no longer need the letter of the law because the spirit of the law guides us. Amen? 
I don't need to have a policeman looking over me, don't do this, don't do that. Don't do this and don't do that because God is guiding me in the righteous ways. Now, you can be in a country of freedom, but still be in prison. Uh, do you know that there are many that are so in prison today, uh, shackled up here? Uh, because true freedom can only be given from the God who endows it to us, who gives it to us. Um, God has to set us free to have a liberty. It's not just in the framework or the laws around us or the country or the environment that we're in that brings true, true freedom. Uh, God releases us to have freedom wherever we might be. Now, you have to stay with me. We're going to bring this, go back to John 8 with me. Because Jesus brings about some very encouraging words to us in John 8, and we'll pick it up in verse 31. And he's saying to those that were around him, because uh, the Pharisees again were questioning him and, and telling him uh, you know, what right he had to speak this way and so on. And Jesus said to the Jews there, who believed in him. If you buy my word, you are my disciples indeed, verse 31, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Then he answered them, We are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say we will be made free? And Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave shall never abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. You notice he started out, he says, if you abide in my word, if you abide in me, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You can be in any environment, you can be in a prison somewhere on some far own country, shackled by chains of this world and still be free. Amen. Amen. Or you could walk on this earth and think you have freedom but be enslaved. You see the paradox there. Do you remember the movie we watched some time back that here in the church was called Believe? Believe. And uh, there was a mother in the movie, and I'm remembering this, she had dementia. And um, the one daughter was a Christian, and she would come and visit the mother and take care of her. But the other son, he was a real estate investor. And he was very uh, wealthy, doing very well. And one day he went to visit his mother, but he never did. This is years past. He went to visit his mother. And he says, I don't know what I'm doing here. His mother's sitting there. This is the scene. I don't know what I'm doing here. He says, you know, look at me. I'm doing great. I, I have all my health. I uh, am doing well financially. And look at you, sitting there with dementia. You don't even know who I am. And all of a sudden, the mother, which was a Christian, started to prophesy and said this. Satan has a jail cell for all who follow him. But he leaves the doors wide open. And you're free to come and go. And there's so many that are in prison and the doors are wide open. And it's the picture today that only Christ can set us free and then you be free indeed. The ways that even our country that has given us the great freedoms to make health, wealth, and prosperity, to pursue liberty, health, and happiness, if Christ is not in it, we find ourselves in a place that is brings about a bondage that only 
God can give us the true freedom. Jesus said this in verse uh, 12 here. He says, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me shall not be in darkness, but have the light of life. When we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the pathway opens up for us. The truth of the gospel is given to us. True freedom is found from there. Because of all man being born unto sin has been born into shackles. That's why the Pharisees said, we have never been shackled to anyone. We're not slaves. We are Abraham's descendants. Jesus said, it is only the Son who can set you free. And when the Son set you free, you are free indeed. Today, with our laws that are unrighteous at times, for the very innocent, for the very law that should be protecting our society has been used to twist for other gain of unrighteous individuals. There'll be a day of an accounting, and that day will, will come as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who is building it. Knowing the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. What takes your freedom? What takes my freedom today? Do you know if you turn the television on and you watch our presidents and our Congress and the laws that are being enacted, if we try to control that with our emotions, with our discussions with one another, do you know that that will take your peace? Psalm 37, 1 says this, do not fret when evil prevail. That fretting takes your freedom from you. Now, I had a discussion with my dear brother the other day where uh, very easily, when you watch the unrighteous laws that are given, the things that are happening to our country, uh, and even try to control them in my discussion, robs me of my joy, robs me of my peace, and puts me in shackles. We have ways to change laws through voting. I would say vote the unrighteous laws out of here. But we know that there's an accounting coming. We know that what the scriptures declare to us, the scriptures say that there'll come a time where evil will be called good and good will be called evil. We're at that time. You need to know where we're at. You need to know that Satan's time is short and therefore he's kicking up things and we need to be in the word. Remember what it said there? Those are my disciples who stay in my word. They shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Without the truth of the scripture of being in the word, I'm start to believe what's found on the television. I start to believe what's going on in the physical realm around me. And it starts to steal what God has given me for freedom. You see? You may walk out of here and say, I'm free to go and do this and to do that. Uh, I always look at the paradox of things. You know, we, 
we look at, uh, we're thankful that we declared independence from Britain. You know, our declaration of independence. That's what we're celebrating today. And, and thank you, Pat, for bringing about, you know, our Constitution. We look at the Constitution. These things are all good. And, and we look at the Bill of Rights under there, you know, freedom of speech, bare arms, uh, number two, and, and so on. All those things are great and good, you see. But even heaven and earth is going to pass away. But Jesus said, my word will endure forever. Amen. That is what's going to stay. Amen. That's what supersedes. And see, when the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. And if you're not a born again believer, you're in bondage. You say, no, I'm not in bondage to anyone. I have Abraham as my ancestor. And we may not say that, but when we say, you know, I've been going to church 20 years, or I, I belong to, you know, Second Baptist, or, you know, I, I've done this. I, none of that counts. None. The only thing that counts is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and walking in the liberty He has given us. There we are born again believers. Now, friends, the scriptures, I, and uh, Pat quoted from uh, Galatians 5, you know, and in 5.13 it says this. It says that we have been given liberty in Christ Jesus, but don't allow your liberty to cover up for evil. You see? Meaning that we're free to do all things because grace abounds in our lives. What a blessing that is. That, that means that grace is afforded to us as believers. That means my life doesn't need to be perfect. And I don't need the letter of the law to direct my life because I have the Spirit to lead me. You follow what I'm getting at? There's liberty with the Spirit guiding us. There's, there's freedom in those things. We think about um, those Jesus addressed there. They had the embodiment of the law. They knew it frontwards and backwards. Jesus called them of the devil. He called them to task. Now I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Look at verse 42. And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and came from God, and I have not of myself, he said, he's declaring. Why don't you understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. Well, wow, that's something. You see that in verse 44? He was talking to the, to the Pharisees. And you want to do what your father was. He was a murderer and a liar from the beginning. True embodiment of freedom is found in Christ and Christ alone. Yes, we live in a, a wonderful country. We have the framework and the skeleton of laws around us. But we don't need law on law to know Thou shalt not murder. You know, we're trying to enact now more gun right laws. How many know that that won't do anything for a righteous man? And it's far less for an unrighteous man. Why? Why? Because it is the heart of man that needs to be changed. Amen. Not the law. We have to come back, one nation under God, with the Lord Jesus Christ exalted. Pray for our nation that there be revival. Not just for an economic landslide. That will be a blessing. But what is a man gain the whole world? 
and lose his soul. Right? Many are losing their soul. Like you heard me say it last week, sometimes our prosperity is detrimental to our spiritual growth. Because we use those as props, we lean on those things, and of course, you know, that becomes even our God. Do you know Jesus said that? You can't serve God and money. You know, you'll love one and hate the other, or you despise one and follow him. I hope I made a little bit of sense here. To, to try to combine here the greatest nation on earth, the liberties were given here. But Jesus, our God and our Savior, the one who writes in the dirt, has given us the greatest liberties that you could ever have. He's the one who gives you life, liberty, and gives you the ability to pursue it. Because, you know, uh, what is, I just speak on this for a minute, happiness is something that is fleeting. Joy is something that's eternal, that God places within us. You could be poor, you could be shackled, but you could have joy. Or you may be wealthy and cruising, the Mediterranean. But if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. You have nothing. That is, that is the message. When the Son set you free, you were free indeed. The things that are enacted to us, you could write the, the Constitution, they could change that, they can amend it, and they have, you know, they, they They've amended 17 amendments, then they adopted 10, and, and so on. That's just something there that is a blessing. But if we're not born again, you know, we're born into rebellions. Real quick, I tell you a story about. Uh, this man was driving along. His little boy was in the back. And by the way, I just had my grandkids, and uh, they get, you know, the, the rebellious nature of them. You know, they're just uh, spare a rod and spoil a child. You know, <laughs> I love them. <laughs> but you know, here's the things that I experienced. You know, uh, they're, they're obedient to the law at times because the, if you're not obedient to the law, there's consequences. And I heard a story, uh, this man was driving along, he said to his son, sit down back there. He said, okay, daddy, I'll sit down, but in my heart, I'm standing up. <laughs> and that's, see, you have to change the heart. Because integrity and things that happen behind the scenes when no one is looking, okay? What happens in the darkness? Yeah. But being born again, we don't need uh, a policeman, per se, to know what is right and what is wrong. Because we want to do what is right and please our Heavenly Father because we have been born again. And there's true freedom when you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You lay your, down, your head down at night and not worry about, oh, did I say something uh, wrong and do I have to cover up on something? No. I've been set free from all that. Praise the Lord. And if you're not experiencing that freedom, let today be the day of your salvation. Let today be the day that you throw the shackles off. You no longer have to walk in bondage. No longer be yoked with the things of this world. Because Jesus said, even though he's not in this world, we're not in this world either. This is not our home, friend. We have a place that's prepared for us. As we celebrate today and barbecues and, and families and all those things are, are great 
And the country we live in is the greatest country at all. But we serve the greatest God of all, the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who writes in the dirt. And he tells those that are unrighteous and those that are twisting laws and trying to hurt other people that their days are numbered. That they are put on a scale and they're found to be in want. And at the end of times, there's going to be justice, my friends. So be of good cheer. And when you watch the television and you get knocked and it robs you of your joy, look up. Because redemption is drawing nigh. And true freedom comes looking to the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who will make all things right. Because I tell you, when you look around and you, you, you watch the television and you watch what's going on, it just feels like they're winning. Friends, they're not. Amen. They're not. Be of good cheer. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> Hallelujah.